Greetings in the name of the most, the most high. Yes, we're getting to it. I uh, just did a, a couple hours, which you won't hear because, well, um, there's a reason. I I think some things are too, you know, some things are so brutal, brutally honest. Um, and I felt it was so disturbing when I concluded that, uh, you know, America is responsible for America, you know. And I realized the whole patriot movement, there's a problem with it, in that it's always pointing the finger of blame to other people. Have you noticed that? Look, I know that any situation we're in that is untoward, somehow we have something to do with it, you know. And this is no exception, and I've, I for one, got so mad at our leaders, our dear leaders, for what, betraying us, putting us in this mess, somehow it's having something to do with it. I um, recognize now that, sure, but I have also had something to do with it. And you also have had something to do with it. We have, um, all of us, sort of run our own way over the years, and or we didn't stand up enough to evil, or we didn't want to get involved, or we looked the other way, and so we're in the situation we're in. And uh, all I have to say about it is, it's unfortunate, it's um, maybe a lousy thing to come to the conclusion of, but I think it's the only way to healing. Because only in this way can we truly forgive, because as we're forgiven, we forgive, we realize our own hand in it. Well, if I do release the pod, it will be under the proviso that, you know, I was under the proviso that I was in a rare emotional state that could maybe, someone could take advantage of me in that state. Plus, it was very convicting in that it set the blame where the blame belongs. Look, it's this simple. This is the, where the area I cover. If you're going to die, okay, and you... And you, uh, and you die as a victim, okay, or don't even know you're dead, or just feel it was unjust, or, you know, some kind of trouble, no peace in that death. In other words, you're not ready to die. You're not prepared for the return of the Son of Man, which is your death. Hey, there's one you haven't heard. <laughs> oh, good luck with that. Anyway, um, you could have a bad result after death. So we'll know I'm absent from the body, is present with the Lord. Um, not necessarily. Not if you believe it's an unjust situation. If that's the case, then you have unforgiveness. You yourself have not factored yourself in to this horrible situation we find ourselves in. So since you're not responsible, obviously it was unjust and your blood will cry up from the ground, meaning you're a ghost. The only way to avoid that, and you know what, I'm really boiling it down now to like 15 minutes because I've got a, got a Z and Frankie coming up too and a podcast from yesterday and i got a big piece I'm working on where I'm, it's, it's a, I'm really going out the rolling drums. I'm kind of frustrated because it's a big drum piece and I'm, I'm blowing it, you know, and having to go back and do another, another take. I just got so tired yesterday. It was good, like a workout. But, uh, you know, a lot of times I can program drums in MIDI where I can write them notes in and, you know, I can do it that way, 
do it on the keyboard, do it with quantizing, but with um, the live drums, keeps you honest. I do it all three ways, and I do editing also afterwards, but I got to go back and do more takes, but it's just, uh, it's all good, you know, it's just that I've made a decision to, you know, give you the, uh, the kit drums, real drum and real, and I, I mainly I do drums and synthesizers, and those are my two, because I've always been a good keyboard player, so. Well, at times I'm a great keyboard player, I'm not just good. Especially when I do jazz. I haven't done jazz in a long time, but yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm probably better on keyboards than drums, but I'm known for drums. And uh, I've been getting into real outboard synths lately, the Prophet 12, Pro 2, the uh, Moog Sub Fatty, and so, you know, and then, and then playing real drums. So I just figure you want to hear real instruments, right? Well, you can play the, the soft sense online, but I mean, it's not the same thing, is it? it uh, they sound just as good. But there's just some, right? Just like you can get great drum samples and you can program the MIDI with your, to write the drum parts out the way you would do it, or you could perform it on pads or whatever, or you could pick up the sticks. With the sticks, you get something different. But don't hold me to that because there's no right way of, wrong way of doing it. You know, the uh, computer is as much of an instrument these days as uh, anything else. But I have, I'll have to show you the studio sometime. There is no, there's, you, you go into a cockpit surrounded with synthesizers and, and, then, and then outboard, you know, sound gear. And everywhere you turn, it's like that. It's just, it's really, <laughs> it's like fitting yourself into a, uh, you know, an F-16. <laughs> anyway, it's our fault. And, um, you know... Please stop using the word Illuminati. I mean, I, I've even found myself using it. They don't go by that. You know, when you want to blame someone, usually people want to blame the global elite. Uh, they want to blame the global elite and blame them but good. Uh, I just got my movie, movie camera uh, fitting for the iPhone. It's... Uh, it's a very heavy-duty, powder-coated, um, made of billet aluminum, and then powder-coated black, just like Aeroflex cameras, or, you know, it's, it's a movie gear that people make feature films with. Yes, when they say they made a feature film with an iPhone, they have put the whole studio attachment onto it and use, you know, meaning a new lens, the, uh, the housing, which I have here. You can see it's metal, see? The housing, the, uh, 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 the studio mat, which is a, a big square thing that goes on lens. The, it's, this is fitted for uh, any kind of Nikon lens or any kind of lens you want to use. Prime lenses is what I like to use. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. But right now, this thing I got, just putting this on the iPhone, and you take an image. I want to take it in the studio today and, and give you some of that. Uh, it's so rich. It's cinema, you know. It's not 4K, but, but on YouTube we don't do 4K. So it's just, it's rich. And so I'm kind of stuck. They have little dolly. It's cool. They have, uh, anyway, I've seen these guys making their independent feature films with studio mat. Um, you know, you know what I mean. It's a big square. It's like a big rectangle thing on the ed end of a lens that when you see a movie being made, that's what the cameras have. Same thing with this. Um... Uh, zoom lenses, prime lenses, I like a wide-angle lens because everything is in deep focus. So if I'm up close, you see everything behind me just as in, in, in close focus as well. Stanley Kubrick used to use mainly wide-angle lenses, so you would have that, just that same effect. Because we see that way. See, I can see you and then see beyond. Anyway, I was so surprised at the, the, the heavy industrial... It reminds me of the Russian cameras. I had a Russian 16 millimeter camera a long time ago. It was built just so solid, you know? And, and so it's so bizarre to put your iPhone, you know, they give you a little rubber thing to put around it, then you stick it in there. And then you can take the lens off and put other lenses on. Uh, there's a lighting kit. I have to get some lights. Yeah, definitely. There's a lighting harness. There's a... Um, 
what else is there? And I've got these camera and these glasses. So between those, the only thing is you can't see it from the front. You can't take a video of yourself from the front because you can't see the image. They have a a, a sound kit with a um, with a road uh, a road. Uh, those usually don't work that well. I mean, if you're going to be doing a documentary, maybe. But you know, you can have a very sensitive mic on there with a mic harness that goes on there, and then a, a uh, there's a way to put it all together. So it's uh, it's got three fittings for tripods on the bottom, so you could have a tripod, it on a tripod, and uh, I need a tripod. Um, there's no end to what you can do. The point is, is that. Uh, I don't know why they had. I didn't even know this kind of thing was available. I stumbled onto it. It was like 130 bucks. I was looking at getting a camera, and I'm like, "The heck with that! This iPhone with this thing, it's as, it's better, you know." And uh, let's face it, 130 bucks. I mean, I don't need another thing. I, I've, I'm looking at their dolly. They have a dolly. A little, a little tiny cart it goes on where you can get a dolly move. Very important to be able to get a dolly move if you're making a film. Because, you, you know, when you're filming your characters, you have a two-shot. What you want to do is you want to have that dolly slowly moving by from left to right or right to left in a two-shot or slowly moving in. Again, use of the dolly rather than a zoom. We don't use a zoom in filmmaking. Uh, not that I'll make a film with an iPhone, but the fact that they make movie equipment. I mean, hardcore stuff. This is hardcore. You know, this is like the Aeroflex or something in the old days. You know, this is like the, which are like a, a half million to a million dollar camera. <laughs> it just cracks me up, you know, that for 130 bucks you get a harness, you're, you're making a movie. I mean, it's a movie at that point. You know, you need lighting, you, need, you, know, you put makeup on, oh, you, can, you need to have actors, which you're not going to get, but at least you can get a decent image. That's very important to me. Just an iPhone image is good. It's all, it always starts pretty good, but that sort of puts it over the top. Of course, you need lighting to pull it off, and then that gets into a, okay, here it goes. I'm going to open this and pop this thing. And this is going to be another little bit of coffee because I, I, I have to tell you, it was a rough night. It was really a rough night. Well, I don't know why I would do a, a video. I just, you know, with this, it may not be possible because uh, you can't see what you're taking a picture of when you, if you're filming yourself. It's really, you have to film some other object besides you. But... I don't know. It's just one of those things. It's like the kind of thing Frankie gets a hold of, and he's really stoked. It's sort of like that. It's just, I'm just so amazed that it, something like this exists. And most people don't really know anything about filmmaking, so they're not going to understand you need to have a film image. That's okay. It's all video nowadays, right? But to wit, you don't need to spend a lot of money on a camera. If you have an iPhone, which a lot of providers will give you for about free, there is a whole realm uh, inexpensively to actually make you no excuse. You can make a documentary. You can make a movie. You know. Uh, well, the big thing about movies isn't the camera; it's all the scheduling, right? Anyway, so we have a responsibility to not be seeing ourselves as victims. And I've been, you know, I have a, a gift and a curse of being very sensitive, you know, and, and where I feel something is going to happen like in my body, you know, and sometimes in my dream, then it comes up in my dreams. I'll say it, you know, a lot of things have, you know, like the idea of the replacement of Americans with foreigners, and having that vision in 2003 and having that affect my body and then seeing that that, be, that has been the policy all along blows my mind. We were the only ones that had that. 
And to, to date, uh, I think we're the only ones that, that, that had, I mean, the news says, you know, I don't think people realize it's really about replacement, but this was a policy and has been a policy for some time and was predicted based on having a vision about it in a dream and then having this feeling in my body. Well, now I've had these feelings for a while of terrible oppression, okay? Terrible um, sorrow, as I've been in sorrow quite a bit. Um, no, 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 I'm not going to complain about it. It's, it's part of the job of coming to earth. You go into sorrow. Of terrible, um, uh, how can I put it? Just, you know, it's not like I'm not dealing with, see, a lot of times I'll pick up stuff that other, other people are dealing with. And then people will criticize me and go, oh, you need to do this. You need to get more into the word. Or you need to go do this or that. It's like, no! I'm telling you what's happening. Not for you to criticize me, but for you to understand what's happening out there. Well, uh, notably, I have frustration over the Christian thing. Uh, but I think, you know, I guess it's, it goes with the course of anything, you know. People, if they can, they will want to uh, yeah. steer you this way or that. I, uh, I have heard a pretty good theory recently. Okay, I'm done with that. This is my second attempt at an audio today, so it's a little bit hackneyed in a sense. But at least it's not going to disturb you, you know. Well, it was really disturbing, and it was really raw, and it was, it was too much, okay? But, so here's the thing, uh, and I've got to be up for Zine Frankie, and I've got to also be up for, uh, for the uh, music in the studio. It's just <laughs> the hard work of, of drumming really hard, because I got a drum, I, I, it's a live drum piece that goes, it's five minutes. Uh, I can't make a mistake, and there's, it, it's, just, it's, a, it's amazing how many mistakes. A couple of mistakes you can edit, but uh, it's going to be good. You know, I'm not going to try to sell you. It's like nothing I've ever done. It's just so progressive and so weird. It's, it's really, I tuned everything to 444 hertz, including the drums, <laughs> which is pretty interesting. Uh, okay, so... No, I think that's what's good. And I have to retune. I, I wait till I get an audio file and I tune it. That's a better way to go because you can do it all at once. It's it's sixteen cents up from four forty. Right, sixteen little cents, or sixteen one hundredths of a semitone, which gives you four forty four, which gives you a high C at five twenty eight. Most people just call that 528 tuning. It's not true. It's actually 444. But uh, there's just something about it. The vibe is just so, you know, powerful and kind of electric and, you know, just energized. It's really something. It's, it's uh, uh, way different from the 532, which 532 you shouldn't even do unless you're just going to, like, play tones or something. Or 432, rather. Uh, well, if you're dislocating your sounds, it's not going to, you know what I mean? It's going to be hard to keep them so you can present. It's, it's you, you, you just go with it. You know, just get a synth out and just let the synth go where it wants to go. Uh, okay, so a lot of sorrow and, you know, and, and, and kind of trying to explain it from the point of view of the meek. Okay, meek, you know, people that are bullied, people that are like, uh, call themselves TIs, people that, uh, you know, pure hearts that, that don't know about the satanic underworld, you know, and they're just being toyed with and picked on and, and, and made fun of by people that think they're on the in crowd. Well, that would be the majority of Americans. So the thing is, is that, you know, they're no different than the quote unquote Illuminati, which I hope we'd stop using that word because they don't use it. And they laugh at people that do. 
Uh, they would never use that word. <laughs> it doesn't exist in their vocabulary. If you're talking about the global mafia, you know, the, the, the club, if you will. Um, the, the thousands of years old club. Okay, well, no, they don't use that term. Sorry. No, it's not the Jews who run the entertainment business. It's not the, you know, it's, it's basically, uh, who's involved in that kind of bullying? I mean, they couldn't do it unless there was another side that they were on, right? Which the target, or the, you know, the meek person, wouldn't know anything about, right? And that's, isn't that the essence of it? Well, that would then involve pretty much the entire nation in 9-11, for example. But if some sort of, you know, 9-11 kicks off a, a whole, you know, a kind of a, a countdown clock to a certain result they want, which, you know, you can read all the Pike letters and whatever now, you can, you know, you understand. So, but I have a feeling that if people had to suddenly die here, you know, which is a possibility at this point, a very strong one, um, they would die as victims. Uh, and, you know, th that's just too bad. Uh, but we all have a responsibility in, in, in everything. You know, and if it really bothers you to the point of becoming an activist, then you better make sure your hands are clean. The only way your hands are going to be clean is if you're washed clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. I mean, that, that, we all know that. Even in other religions, they get shown Jesus, you know, when they seek God. So you understand there's a need for that cleansing. And then when that happens, if you die, you're not a victim. You don't feel it's unjust. You're, you're trusting the Lord. So if the Lord, you know, and that's how you go home. If you feel it's unjust and you're a victim, that means there's unforgiveness. You ain't going home. You're going to, you know, hopefully you won't be hanging around. But I've seen all those spirits hanging around. And they are, and by the way, folks, you know what they told me in the church? They told me those weren't real. Those were demons. Well, I, I've, I've verified they're real again and again, but they won't believe me. I just had to, I had to break company with them because they're, they're wrong. And there are other people, the other thing is, you know, when you say the Bible is the inerrant word of God, you're a liar. Because it, says, it has God saying, um, I regret that I made man, so I think I'll flood the whole place. Man did exactly what God made them to do. <laughs> Otherwise, he's hamstrung in a box under your control like you're Mr. Wizard. So that's what they've done. No, if you interpret it right, it can be the word of God. But if you don't have the right interpretation, it's, that's obvious, that, you know, you have to delve beyond the surface of that one. Otherwise, you insult God. It's like when someone brought up the Paul Walker thing that I was consulting with the dead. No, I was not. The whole point of the, of the Samuel scripture is, is basically to say, you take it to the Lord. The Lord got my attention via that something that happened to me. And then I had taken it to the Lord and I dealt with it. And I didn't have to cut you in on it. I could have just kept it to myself. But that was an inaccurate um, understanding of what had happened. Uh, but I'm not really one to protest. It doesn't bother me, you know, that, that it's inaccurate. I don't feel like I need to go clear the record or anything. But, I mean, you know, that's the way I deal with stuff like that. Always have. You, know, you ask Trish, I don't seek the dead. I don't seek to be a medium. I don't seek to be this or that. I don't seek to be any, any you know, that's all... That's all, um, you know, I, I, again, the, the thing got my attention. I take it to the Lord. Then I ask, well, Lord, what does this all mean? What, what's my involvement here? What do you, and then, then I understand, okay? So that's, that's the way it was in Santa Fe. That's the way it is here. That's the way it always is. But that doesn't stop, you know, the Lisa Rubies of the world from, you know, having excoriated me and, and vilified me and made me an outcast before I even got started because of her own ignorance, and her own, you know, obviously, stupidity. And so I've had, but then I've learned that there's so many others in the same boat that I've had to, you know, divorce myself from all that. And also their pedantic understanding of, of the Bible. It's like, it's, in their hands, the Bible's very dangerous because they're teaching all kinds of mythology about God that isn't true. One being that he's watching man and he's just, you know, in total upset and sorrow and watching what man does. It's like, no, if, you, if, you're the, 
if you're the potter and man's the clay, then you know exactly what he's going to do. So you're not in sorrow. If you're experiencing sorrow, it's because you wanted to, like when you watch a movie, you know, even though it's actors, not real. Okay, so um, that's the bottom line. I want God to be God, the sovereign. I want God to be God. He's responsible for the whole creation. There's nothing that happens that's outside his will. I want to make sure we stay on that point of consistency. When it deviates from that, it ceases to be the word of God. Period. I don't think we need any more argument about this, do we? So that just shows how destructive the Bible can be to people because they get, you know, these interpretations in their mind and, um, and, and on it goes, you know, and then it, it was because there's the Old Testament, then there's the New Testament, which basically changes the, the program and, and basically says eye for an eye is no longer the, the way of, of living. It's Christ, you know, which is forgiveness and which is, which is love and forgiveness and the works of Christ, which is self-sacrificing, self-effacing, um, intentionally keeping oneself low, you know, uh, dying uh, to self and, and all those things that, that are also shared in other religions as well and, and also among monks of various traditions. And, um, you know, the whole point of all that is that's what, you know, he's teaching us what God wants from us. And that's, that's the only way we can really go because that's the way that we become acceptable to the Lord is through Jesus, through Christ. And um, not through works, although works are important. Not through, um, you know, any kind of in intention. It's, it's really just, you know, we're born he here in the flesh. So already we have the curse of the flesh. As we come in, we are already got three strikes against us. So we need, you know, a way out of this because you look at all the different configurations there could have been, but yet we come here. Um, some people have a theory that we are fallen angels. I mean, that I've, I've heard that and, I've, and, and friends have shared that with me. And it's, that's what I kind of reject because I, don't, I just don't feel any, I'm not a fallen angel, so I, you know, I never have been a fallen angel, so I'm not going to uh, entertain that. I mean, I thought maybe I did something wrong, but I mean, there's really no way to prove it. And, I, you know, maybe I have a fallen angel. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, that, maybe, maybe there could have been something to that. I mean, certainly I have, you know, there were times I was, you know, knowing things that I could not possibly know in this life. That happens a lot. And is that an ancient memory or is a collective memory or is that a, you know, it's, it's something you can't answer. But uh, regardless of whatever, the theories about whether we're fallen angels and then when we came in the flesh, that's the fall of man. That, that sounds good, but it, it doesn't matter. What matters is not where we came from at all. What matters is that we're in the flesh and we got this problem, but we got to deal with it. That's really all that matters. So, um, you know, uh, whether sin originates with um, the weakness of Adam and Eve, or is that just really, I, I believe what that story is for is to teach us this, that we have flesh, that we, this is, we inherited that DNA. We have this flesh condition that we're in right now, and that gives us traits of evil and good, i.e. tree of knowledge. And we need to deal with it. We can't deal with it without God. I mean, it just comes down to that. So whether you say original sin or sin, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. We have it. We got to deal with it. Same thing. No difference. But one is taught as a lie and the other is the truth. I mean, that's, so that's a big difference. Right? Uh, I am sorry that I made man. I think I'll flood him now. Well, the only problem with teaching that uh, exactly as, it's, as the narrative reads right there, uh, for the literalist, um, if they teach it that way, they become liars immediately. And they show they have no Holy Spirit. So that, that's a lot of people in error. God can't possibly uh, be sorry he created man because he knows all things. He knows what man will do. He knows what man will do and every man will do and everything will do all the way to the very end of time. So therefore, he can't be sorry because he created it to do what it did, it, right? So again, we need to take responsibility for it. If there's a flood, okay, or if there's a nuclear war and we're taken out, okay, then um, it's, we have to somehow be right with God to where that we trust him and that's okay and we're going with him. 
Not, oh gosh, God, that's unfair. You know, how could you include me in your wrath? Uh, he didn't include you. If you died in a nuclear war, he didn't include you in the wrath. He, t he took you out. You know, you're, you're, you're free of this now. You should want to be free of it. If you don't, there's something wrong with you. If you think this is it, uh, you, 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 I feel sorry for you is what I feel. If you think this is it. If you think this is wonderful, then you've got a problem. You know, it's, 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 it's evil. It's heartbreaking. There's some good, yes, but mainly it's, it's just tragic uh, wherever you look. And, and I feel very sorry for people, and I, I feel the pain. You know, that's the thing about me. I feel the pain. Right now I feel, you know, this, this oppression, you know, and, and I have to make sure I keep it real, meaning it's coming from outside. You know, it's the, it's the, it's the oppression the public feels. It's the, it's the sorrow the public feels as I'm picking up on it. It's the screams of the future with the future attacks. It's the horror of people dying as victims, thinking it's unfair and therefore being doomed to being, you know, stuck in the astral plane somewhere trying to get back in here because they don't think they're dead. Oh, well, don't worry. Christians won't help you move on to the next thing. Jesus might, but Christians won't because it, it doesn't exist. So blinders on, please. So this, this one will go up because I'm not, I'm not making it so personal, you know. I was just recounting on how I had a, you know, that I, you know, people talk about white privilege. I had real privilege back then and, and you know, and then I, you know, I kind of flipped out when I realized that it was all satanic. I was like, well, geez, you know, I, I wasn't fit. No, it wasn't like a choice. You know, I know that, um, that back then my mother would say, well, you know, it's your choice. And it's like, um, so if I'm suffering or being gang stalked or something like that, which is what happens when you choose the, uh, the light rather than the darkness, um, she goes, well, you shouldn't complain. That's your choice. So I kind of saw it from that point of view too. And I'm like, well, how do you do all this stuff? And she goes, it's supernatural. Anyway, so, and how, how many people are we talking about, right? Um, enough so that they're responsible for 9-11. Meaning, when I say that, I mean, you know, meaning the whole enchilada, right? They're responsible for the millions of Iraqi children uh, killed with DU. However, right? That's enough to get them killed. So when you say, I don't deserve the nuclear bomb, uh, you got to think again. How many of you are really right? And how many of you are really kind of having one foot on one side, one foot on the other. I mean, only you can answer that. I can't. I can't look at you and answer it. I don't know. Only you know. It's like, you can't tell me about God. I have to be with God and work it out, just like you do. I can't tell you about how to go to your God. I've got my God. You've got your God. Maybe the same God, but you've got to do it your way. I've got to do it my way. There is no two ways are the same. That's one of the faults of religion. They say everybody's got to conform to the same thing, and then it just becomes a form of mind control, and, of course, that... that that then um, cancels it from, from its efficacy and then becomes more of a social mechanism rather than a, you know, in other words, a status quo maintainer rather than a, uh, a, you know, a, a force of healing or good. No matter how good the intentions are, people going into the priesthood or the, you know, the, the ministry or whatever, it's, it, it always comes out like that because whenever you get man together with man, it's just always going to be like that. You know, it's good. Man will exalt himself as some sort of leader or, or you know, and interpret it very soon. You, I, you know, they'll be teaching you about how you have to see this and how you have to see that. And then you start spitting back, yes, we'll be raptured on this date because blah, blah, blah. You know, and, and they, they actually, I actually sat there in the Calvary Chapel while they tried to, uh, lay on me that rapture thing. I just started laughing. And they can't be serious. Look at all these gullible people shaking their head up and down. They can't be serious. I mean, nobody with any kind of a mind would accept that. You know, especially when you have martyrs, you know, really earnest people, um, you know, being beheaded by people we're funding, which puts it blood on our hands. And again, we have to own up to that, folks, or you won't be able to die. Right now, you got to think about dying. Uh, this podcast is for the purpose of you understanding that you might die, so I want to make sure that I've done what I can do to help. You've got to be able to die, and you can't die if you feel like you're a victim. Or you're not going to make it. 
the very, uh, what, what's the sin you're creating? The sin is unforgiveness, but I mean, it's beyond that. It's, you know, refusing to repent, not accepting Christ, not dying to self. All that's baked into the cake if you feel like you're a victim. So that's the number one thing I want to I want to emphasize is we must all, you know, recognize and that I don't care if you're a TI, if you call yourself that, that's a terrible thing to call yourself. Um, what you are is you're just you're just a you know your target all right, but it's but why why are you talking? because you're a, obviously a pure heart, you're not part of the club, whatever, and they are you're not so they they you know the path of least resistance they pick on you. But if you feel like you're a victim, then you become a perpetrator and you become responsible for everything that you feel a victim of. So you, right, just a spiritual reality, you know, play the tape back if you don't understand it. Play it back 10 times and you'll get it. Look, the bottom line is we in this country, blood on our hands. I know whether you think it was George W. Bush or Clinton bombing, I don't know, where was it, Yugoslavia or something, whatever he was bombing, Slovakia, and they're wondering, why is he bombing us, you know? All that is, you know, blood on our hands, and we have to, you know, Iraq was tragic, we only did that because we're in the war business, and then we, we went ahead and, and retroactively lost it, after, by the way, I predicted we would lose every war, because now, well, it's easy to understand now, we fight ourselves, so if you fight yourself, you can't ever win. Amen? Right? House divided cannot, you know. If, if we do terror, if terror is on American soil, we do it to ourselves, right? So again, here we are on our own soil fighting. How about the chemtrails? You know, you, see, you complain about geoengineering and poisoning the skies and dropping all this crap on us, which they've been, and I can see they've been at it all night again. And uh, it's terrible overcast here. But um, I follow the satellite, the infrared, and you can see when there's these lines, you can see, you know, you can see their, how it, they try to hide it in clouds so it looks like it's part of the front, you know, so that, that you can't, you know, so it's ambiguous. It's very, it's terrible being, you know, sprayed with poison. I don't know about you, but, and, and you know, the, they, they believe they're doing good by putting uh, pollution and, and heavy metals in the air because it reflects the sunlight. So they feel like they're doing their best about global warming. But what they're doing is um, destroying the, uh, actually destroying the earth <laughs> in the name of helping it. But that's perfect humanity. You see, that's the curse of the flesh. Okay, so we can't go, it's their fault. It's, it, I, look, I'm being sprayed, it's still my fault in some manner because I'm a participant. If I see it, and I forgive, I have to forgive because otherwise there's no peace in me. I just feel like a victim and oppressed and I start screaming and crying. And if I die like that, I ain't going to the Lord. I know where I'm going. I've seen enough to know. You may not know if you're a Christian because you're taught, taught that nothing exists but what, you, what, what you're taught in the Bible and then, then you miss out on like, you know, 90% of what's going on. But, um, and I'm sorry that you were abused in those churches. I'm sorry that they didn't teach you anything. I'm sorry that they have this rote thing of, you know, they teach you God is in a box and under our control and whatever else it is. I'm sorry, but you just got to get over it. You didn't have to stay there and you did. So you're going to have to deal. You're going to have to finally get healed from it and then, for, you know, forgive them that, you know, and stop pointing the finger of blame because, you know, it's, it's, it's again, uh, well, I see the other guy rise up and do evil. I can see myself doing that too. You know what I mean? I've got to see that or I'm not, I don't have Christ. I know it's a hard way to go. You know, the biggest perpetrators of all this, you know, all the complaining and all the, the, the ramping up against the, what the truth movement or whatever that means. And a lot of that is just complaining about the elites. And some of it is, is born of being jealous of them having money and power and all that. But it's, but they're also participants, you see. Uh, the, the dangerous road they're going down is if they keep going down that road of blaming other people for this horrible time we're having. And, and uh, I don't care if they're losing. So, you know, it's legitimate. Sure, I can understand it. But they have to move to the next level or else 
um, again, they can't die, you know. It's, they don't go with the Lord. So that's a word, and you get that today. And it's just, it's just, just remembering, you know, all the atrocities of Nagasaki, Hiroshima, World War II being a false flag. How about the Gulf of Tonkin? How about, right? All of this is collectively the sins of the fathers, right? Visited upon the sun is, is on us to deal with sin. Well, I don't know how it's going to go, but I mean, if, if, if it goes bad and there's some terrible attacks, a lot of people are going to lose their lives. And, you know, you want them to, you know, realize that we would all pull a 9-11 probably if given the right circumstances. And we would all, you know, could be saints like Mother Teresa or whatever. You'd, well, she was no saint because she's not in it. She was a Catholic. I, I understand. She was a pagan. She was into witchcraft. Okay, fine. Everything is bad. Everything sucks. Everyone is bad. And everything sucks and is unworthy. And it should all just be destroyed. It shouldn't have been created in the first place. Ah, now we're getting down to it. So you're mad at God. Well, then why are you a Christian if you're mad at God? That makes no sense. I mean, it makes sense in a weird, in a twisted way. But you better sort that crap out because otherwise you're not going to be able to be right with the Lord. Especially if you keep looking for the next conspiracy to blame for whatever. Hey, I did hear a good one. I mean, the fallen angel thing, I don't really buy at all. But um, I'll tell you this. This friend, uh, another friend, has this theory that, um, and it's for me, it's a theory. For him, it may be fact. It's just like for the other friend that has the fallen angel thing, it may be fact. But for me, it's just a theory. You know, I don't, I don't give it much. I mean, what is it? It doesn't do anything for me, believe it or not believing in it. So it's, it's not that important. But this one is kind of interesting. It's almost like the Ridley Scott uh, movie. And it basically goes like this, you know. Okay, so the Garden of Eden really represents man in his true state, which is like an animal. Because animals don't know they're naked, okay? So, so that's the state of consciousness described, which I've always believed. Um, and so man's hairy like, a, like an ape, but not quite an ape, but hairy, you know, like the, the aboriginal man. Wandering around, just, just not reflecting on anything, just kind of like being part of nature and there's no problem. Then the, the tree of knowledge is the genetic tampering, the genetic, and he's put it, cocktails that they take. And um, this is what uh, this is what gives you the uh, uh, you know the changes to make you know modern man. But what but what happened is is that they inculcated us and in, in genetically in every other way with their traits. In other words, they're warmongers. They're this. They're that. I and mean, could they be the? I'm sure, they could be. Uh, I he called them the Anunnaki. You know, you could call them whatever you like. I don't like the term angel because it's too um, you know it's just too. It's just filled, it's too much baggage on that term, you know. We, 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 I use it too, but it's just, I can feel, it's just very limited. So he says Anunnaki, which is kind of more interesting, like aliens, like Ridley Scott's movie when they're trying to find their, their creators to find out, you know, how they can live longer. Um, and so we developed all their traits and all their problems and all their propensity for war and evil and, and you know, and good. So there's this tree of good and, and evil, you could do good, you could do evil, you could choose evil, you could choose good. So we got all that from this event that occurred. And we were made for a certain purpose to do, I don't know, work, to do, to be enslaved, to do, you know, for something. I've always often thought it was also for what's inside us, you know, that we're containers, which is also a UFO kind of in the lore of UFO. And, uh, and they, um, you know, and at times they were our uh, rulers, meaning that we would bow down to them you know, because there are progenitors. Now, I don't know what else he said. Uh, maybe I botched it up. But uh, I found it interesting, the imagery of being like a, like a, you know, the first caveman or the first aboriginal man, hairy man, not knowing, you know, shame or just being like the animals. You know, they, they have sex. They're naked. They, they hunt. They, you know... They kill, they do this, they, it's a, but, they're, but they're pure hearts because they, there's no reflective consciousness, which is the thing that was put in us. And when that happened, boom, our consciousness opened up. Boom, there was the, uh, uh, the whole realm of good and evil and the knowledge of good and evil. And then, then there was the, uh, the striving to be as gods, right? Which is the striving to be like them. 
we want to be like our progenitors, and then we'd like to do it all over again to somebody else. And then I got to taking that idea, you know, a little further, and I started thinking, what if those progenitors are really us who became machines? And they're trying to, like, preserve, you know? So when you look at the Bible, though, as like the Adam and Eve story, and you can look at it through the lens of, you know, of that. And you can look at the whole Bible that way to make it make sense, you know, that, that you know, be, beyond, you know, you can actually get it to the point where it does start making tremendous sense. Meaning, you know, there isn't this, but, but you have to get over being angry with God. You know, in other words, it's not about Zeph, and it's not about you. If God kills us, you know, or allows it to be, if you like, I know that Christians like that, the way it allows it to happen. Um, there can be no blame, or you ain't going to make it, because he's our God, he's the one, he's the only one that can solve it for us, so we've got to trust him, and if, you know, taking our life is something he, he wants the, us to trust him with, then we do. Anything other than that would be unforgiveness of God himself, which puts us in a a bind that we can't get around. That's all. I know that people are horrified looking at God like, you know, the, you know, God saw a man was wicked and so he brought the flood. It's like, well, that would make sense if God was stuck in time with you. But God's not stuck in time, so it doesn't make complete sense unless it's explained properly, which it never is. And that goes for the Garden of Eden, and it goes for the, you know, genetic tampering and the intertwining of the, you know, the bruising of the heel and the breaking of the head and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, all those things are mistaught because, you know, man is corrupt and he wants to use the Bible and the pulpit and the power and whatever else he's got to control the congregation to, to, to all think alike, which we can't do. All of us are on a different path with God, and we all have to approach him differently. There's not one size fits all. Sorry, just didn't that way. Anyway, just a word of caution, because if you die, better not blame God. Or, you know, here's a way that you can tell if you're blaming God. Do you blame other people for your death right now if it happens by false flag terror or some terror event, some nuclear war? You blame it's Putin, it's it's Dick Cheney. You're gonna go look for the uh, evil doing uh, Illuminati quote quote to punish that they did it. So if any of that is in your mind, you know, and in your heart, you're going down. You get a double double trouble then. You get kicked in the teeth with your own death and then you're going to get kicked in the teeth by being stuck as a disincarnate entity wandering around because why? Because you, when you have those thoughts in your mind, you are angry. with You blame God. And if you blame God, you blo you're blocked. And so then you're stuck. They say that there's like a lot of ghosts at Gettysburg you know, and where there were scenes of war, like around, you know, Hiroshima and stuff, the, the, the ghosts of those, the, that's right, where there's trauma like that, there was in Santa Fe around the, the, the cross of the martyrs right on that same hill where the slaughter of men, women, and children took place, which I learned all about in the spirit and then was confirmed 100% by those who know. And then I understood what happened there to the woman that got killed that built the place we were in. And, and then, you know, the other guy that was her husband that, actually tried to kill me when I was 18, but I never told him that. <laughs> oh, that's a long convoluted. The, the, the odds on that are 10,000 trillion to one and nothing like, in other words, to completely supernatural that you'd run into your own assassin. <laughs> well, you know, I guess, you know, it all had to do with, you know, not really seeing eye to eye with the satanic society and, you know, they tend to um, try to get rid of people. Uh, you know, it's always an accident or a suicide or something that, oh, the kid just didn't make it, you know, and, and they, that's the only way they can go on. You can't have anyone, you know, an odd man out because it just doesn't work out. You can move away. You can move out, you know, but 
if 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 it's the case that everything runs that way and they're the, and they're the elite, right? They're the privileged, um, telling everyone else what to do, but everyone else knows about what's going on and is playing ball. If that's the case, then we deserve to be nuked. Funny how many of those people that are kind of looked the other way at one time or just kind of didn't want to mess with the devil, so they gave the devil his due, but they just forgot about it. And they, a lot of these people are always looking for, a, for to blame someone. It's the Illuminati. It's the Bush family. It's, it's the Club of Rome. It's this, it's that. Hey, it's us. We're all of it. There's no division in that. Every day of life we have here is a gift, and if it gets and, if, and when the gift ends, the gift ends. But it was still a gift. Don't see it as a gift, then you got a problem. That means you hate God. Oh, I probably hate God half the time, and I have to cleanse that, or else I'm in trouble. I don't know. I'm hating God. It's only when I finally look at it the way I'm looking at it today that I can see that oh. By hating so-and-so, I'm hating God. I see how it works back. I see how I understand. I get it now, what Jesus was teaching. I get it now. I get it now. I get it now. So, you know, we as humans have a conundrum, you know. You really can't, and, and this is where I, I just have to, you know, forget about the bureaucracy, forget about the Congress, forget about the president, forget about, I know we've talked about it all, but it's just, even when we do, it always feels tawdry. You know, like, like it's not going to help us. You know, oh, the government's corrupt. Really? What do you mean by that? You know, and then you can get caught up in that for, you know, the rest of your life. Uh, no, the people that are there, um, you know, there may be a club there in that you're not in, but all the other clubs kind of like bow down to that one club that rules over them, don't they? So we're all responsible, including me. Right? I'm not, are you crusading to uh, end the whole thing today? You're going you're gonna to take on the machine all by yourself, are you? No, I don't think anyone knows how to turn it off, but we certainly know that if it keeps going, it will turn itself off. I don't think there's any question about that. That's why I'm saying I think we all need to prepare for the worst and, and hope for the best. And, you know, meaning that to prepare, the best prepper you can be is one who has forgiven and so if something happens to you, you don't have a grudge going into your own death. Does that make sense? Are you waiting around for God to destroy all the people you don't like? I know people like that. They get mad at me because I don't really share that view, but they get really mad at me. I'm like, well, whether God opens a can of whoop ass or not, it's really none of my business. It was, well, you know, the Bible says, look up for the recompense of the wicked. I, I, I don't need to. To me, I'm more in the spirit of uh, no longer eye for an eye or tooth for a tooth. I don't need to see, uh, rejoice for the Lord God has avenged you. Uh, well, that's fine. Okay, I see. He's avenged not me. I don't need avenging. I have Christ. If I have to say, oh, yeah, get him, <laughs> yeah, get him, then I fail. And then I'm basically in the same boat that the people I am pointing the finger at are in. And then, you know, the same result will probably happen. It's just a really tough kind of final exam if that's what we're going into. Hey, I hope it isn't. I've, I try not to, to visualize too much about, like, could it be this bad or expect it to all be bad. I don't really want to get caught up in that conundrum of, oh, it's going to be bad, oh, it's going to be bad, oh, you know, because then you kind of bring about what you think about, and then that's the way consciousness works, you know. Consciousness is very powerful. It brings about events. God's not separate from anything. But, um, you know, the plane crashes into the mountain on one reality, then you flip into another one where it lands safely. So I'm hoping we flip into another one where it lands safely because I know that's within the realm of possibility. I'm asking the Lord for that, praying in Jesus' name. Wanting that to be so. Um, the Bible is the inerrant word of God. It may be true in the hands of one with the Holy Ghost, 
maybe in the hands of a John the Baptist or Elijah, but in the hands of most people out there, it's a uh, a weapon of uh, of uh, great magnitude against the people. Well, you heard Obama level criticism on Christians recently. You know, regarding taking their own persecution too seriously and this and that and all this other stuff, because he's looking at it from a global perspective of various religions. Because, like in the East, you have the, you know, the the Buddhist prosecuting, persecuting the Hindus, or vice versa. You've got all kinds of persecutions going on all over the place. You know, and to, I think what he was saying was, to, you know, you know, you, you people that if you think you have the uh, the corner, you know, the market cornered on persecution, <laughs> get over yourselves, is what he said. And I understand, you know, what he said does make sense in the sense that, um, you know, it's just it's just a bigger world than that. And there's, there's like I say, all kinds of persecution going on all over the place. And, um, you know, to think you're the only one is, is, is a mistake and tends to put people in a victim um, mentality. And then, you know, that that's just not a good road to be on. So... I want you to really understand that uh, a lot of this stuff is, oh, hello. Hello, Dasha. I feel so sorry for her with her little cone on because she's, you know, gone through the being spayed and, you know, and, uh, you know, which, which, you know, we kind of debated on and then we realized we didn't really want to breed her and, you know, it's, uh, I have to be responsible and, a, you know, a good steward. You know, it's, what about spaying people? Well, there are eunuchs and all kinds of things in the, you know, that God approves of. So, you know, if you're not going to want to breed her, if you don't want a lot of animals around that you can't, you, you give them away. Well, you know what they do around here? You, the, you put a puppy in the, in the, in the, in the, the, uh, the paper, and a lot of times they come out here and they're from laboratories. They want to experiment on them, okay? You want to go through that? You want me to go through that? They experiment on them. Okay? Uh, you got to be willing to keep all your... You want nine German Shepherds? Well, it wouldn't be German Shepherd. It would be a combo of whatever's out here. Okay? Nine mutts. All right? So what are you going to do with them? You're going to take them out to... Uh, here's what they do. When dogs are unwanted, and this is what happened to Molly, and this would happen to Eli, they were taken out and just left in the, left in, 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 in the, in the wilderness. And they made their way back to the city and then got picked up for the shelter. Okay? That's what they do here. And it's just really cold and cruel. And then they kill them in the shelter if they, they're there too long. They put them down. Um, so, no, if, if you neuter and spay your cats and your dogs, I just think you're being responsible. And, my God, you know, the, the idea that you should have all these if I maybe lived somewhere else besides here and there weren't so many predators that eat puppies, maybe I'd do it. But um, it would be a full-time occupation that we're not going to go through. And so um, what does spaying do? It basically stops a, a pregnancy uh, from occurring um, that would be detrimental to, you know, well, are you for abortion? No, I'm not for abortion. And I think an animal husbandry is different than abortion. And, um, you know, I, I, I definitely, I, you know, think whatever you want. I don't care. You know, it doesn't, I, I don't, I'm not going to debate you. Um, I need some help with, hold on a sec. Trish? Help? Uh, okay. All right. Now, um, so you see, in that sense, we're forced to be, you know, in Christ, but we're forced to be a certain way. One, it's not about us, so we're forced to take that point of view. Whatever God has for us, I am grateful. There's another point of view. All this is the Christ-likeness. I see that I'm capable of just as much sin as the other guy. We're well born into the situation and we go different ways. God knows what's going to happen, but all I can do is say, okay, I know bad things have happened and I've suffered, but I forgive because I understand it could have been me on the other, you know, we're all 
in that same boat of born into the situation. So therefore, I really let that go. I really let all that go. And so whatever country I'm in, whatever they're doing, whatever that, you know, when you have a subject-object relationship, then you have a war. We are at war with the elites. I'm not at war with the elites. No, I had to, I had to stop there because Dasha was, oh, she suffers so with that cone on her head. Well, like I said, she was spayed and then um, she has to have the cone for two weeks and then sometimes we can take it off, but she's trying to itch it with her hind foot. She can't itch it. Uh, you know, she could tear herself up, so she's got the cone. And then another few days, and then she doesn't have it, but it was the right thing to do because she's our personal dog. We travel, we do all this stuff, and I, I, I always go with the dog. So uh, you understand what I'm saying. She was, she, was, she was gotten for a purpose that we needed here, and she fulfills that purpose. And that's my view on the uh, animal situation. If I wanted to breed her, then I would have... Uh, picked a champion lines, and um, with a, with a pedigree through through uh, winning, obviously, and bred them and sold them for, you know, a couple grand a piece and made some good money. But that's not my calling. So you know, but I feel so bad though. Anyway, <laughs> you know, I could hear the guilt in my voice. I, I feel so bad that she has to. And she's being such a trooper about it and she's being so good you know and, and uh, she's got some pain meds and that makes her have diarrhea so I'm always taking her out and she's holding it until she gets outside being like the best dog in the world and uh, so next week she gets that cone off and when she gets that cone off we're going to have you know we're at the dog park we're going to do a lot of stuff with her to really get her socialized and just get her really uh, happy because she's uh, <laughs> It's just like if you were laid up with a, in a cast or something, you know, and you were a really good sport about it. But that's the other thing. It goes to attitude. What if you're a really good sport about all this stuff? You know? What if, you know, you really get the Christ um, way and you really have cleansed yourself of any kind of bitterness toward, I don't know, elite, <laughs> wealthy, powerful, you know, uh, all the secret societies that are responsible. And you know, the character assassination that goes on online, I mean, so say you're one of them and you read, you know, a lot of things that aren't true. And people just go insane. I see so much stuff on the Jews lately that I'm, I'm actually horrified. I just can't, I, I can't, I just can't believe that we're going to just blame the Jews or we blame the Jesuits. Who are really Jews? You know, I mean, it gets right. It's all, and I just—it's like I'm sorry, but wickedness and goodness does not belong to any one race or group. More appropriately, of people. And again, if you have that attitude, the Jews are doing it, or the church is doing what you, you I let that go. All the people we've we've talked about, you know, we've criticized, but I don't want to go further than. You know, criticizing for the point of teaching, not criticizing for, for criticizing for the point of opening your mind, not criticizing for the point of trying to hurt the other guy. You know, I don't want to uh, hurt anyone, and I certainly don't blame anyone if this thing goes, because I've got a hand in it too. If we go into World War III, is what I'm saying, then, then if I'm going to die, okay, in a blast or whatever, and all these birds are going to fly and hit everywhere, then I'm going to go, yay, Lord, I forgive all. I've just, I've, a, a long time ago, I'm just ready to go. And whatever you've got next, Lord, hallelujah. You know, I want to be at that state of mind. Because that way I won't be... I think the worst thing is when you see, like the, you know, sometimes victims of accidents and things, it's people... You, you don't know when the Son of Man's going to come, i.e., you don't know when your death is going to be. That's what that always meant to me. I know that's a weird way of looking at it. But, right? Because that's where you stand before you make it, right? So that's the Son of Man comes at a time you least expect, meaning your death. Well, it could have other meanings too, but I think, uh oh, I see some kind of a. Uh, she really went, but I see some kind of a little. Yeah. Um, 
Anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's got some issues with a little bit of like a diarrhea thing because she's got the meds and I need that because there's, you know, pain involved. It's just a... Anyway, so you don't know at such a time where the Son of Man will be. It's like, but the most common thing that happens like that with us humans is our death because the Son of Man never comes generation after generation. So that couldn't be what he's talking about, right? It can't be, or else he'd show up every time, every generation. At some point, we don't know. No, but death comes that way. And with death comes, what happens? It's like the Son of Man coming. You go to the Lord, right? So that's the closest thing that approximates that statement. <laughs> Meaning, I've got to be like the ten, the five wise virgins or five foolish. I keep my lamp in the lamp oil. Meaning, I've got to keep stock of all this and be ready. Meaning, I got to be ready to die, not ready for something. The rapture, the return of Christ. The da da da. It's I'm ready to die because. The whole life I seem to be being prepared for this transition in death. Whether in old age or some traumatic thing, I have to be ready so that if the thing suddenly comes as a surprise, I don't still think I'm alive after I'm dead. Because that way, if, if that's the case, I'd be lost. Right? Or hold a grudge. Then I would not be able to go on. Yes? So this is just something to keep in mind, okay? Something to keep in mind, something that may be helpful to you, i.e., well, it's just something to keep in mind. I'm, um, like I say, I, I'm going to let it go, all the things that happen and all the incidents that happen, and, and you step on my toes, I step on your toes. Let's forgive. Because the greater prize isn't worth the petty squabble if it's going to wreck the prize. Because I go into my death alone, you go into yours alone, it's like equal, right? So whatever you do to me, I do to you. Whatever I do to you, you do to me. You know, you're me and I'm you. In essence, in a sense, in a legal sense. So therefore, I'm going to let it go. Because I want to be like the five wise virgins that kept the lamp oil in the lamp so the lamps didn't go out. In case some out of the blue, I die. Which is, I think, what that, all those verses are about. Right? Because it was, has the Son of Man ever returned at a time you least expected? No. But can you die at a time least expected? Yes. Well, that's, you know, I, like, I liken it to that because that's more applicable. Death is a thing that comes suddenly to us all. Not the Son of Man returning in a terrestrial kind of like from outer space, sort of, that, that doesn't happen. Hasn't happened. It will in 2018. Okay, fine, it will in 2018. I'm all for it. Not against it. Just saying so far, that death comes like that, but not the Son of Man. Uh, but the Son of Man is death in the sense that you meet your maker, right? You go to the light. If you don't know you're dead or you're holding some kind of grudge or you feel something happened unjust, then you are saying, I hate God because you don't trust God. If you don't trust him, then you hate him. You're blaming God even though it's in the form of other people. Whenever you blame someone else, you're mad at God even if you don't know it. So therefore, that's got to be cleared away. And that's the kind of work that we can do. Each one of us can do that kind of work. You know, it's, it's, it's not really, it's, it's really just realization. You know, you realize that it's whatever our problems are perceived wrongs to us and all that other stuff that we perceive, or that so-and-so is doing it, or the Jews are doing it, or the 
evangelicals are doing it or the Catholics are doing it or the Muslims are doing it or the president is doing it or the Congress is doing it or the military industrial complex. I mean, we've talked about a lot of that here, but I just want the proviso to be up in our podcast. I forgive all. I hold a grudge against no one. The Lord has got my steps. The Lord's got my bed. The Lord put me here. I'm not, I am not to question him. I'm to trust him. So whatever kind of horrors that I see out there, I got to reel it back in. Even if it means I get up in the middle of the night and work it out with you on the podcast, I have got to do this work. Because otherwise, I'm like I was with my friend the other day on the phone going, oh, it's all terrible. You know, I'm like that. And, you know, when you have a few days ruined with that kind of attitude, it's like, is that the way you want to live the rest of your life like that? What if something good happens? Or you get a respite of a few years. So what are you going to do then? Just go, every day's ruined. Right? So something's wrong when I'm, as justifiably as that state is, with the things I'm seeing or feeling out there, I'm feeling the pain, I'm feeling suffering from people. I've got to put it in the right context. I, it, it, if, it, if, if I'm taking it on the chin and it's bumming me out, okay, well, I'm really bummed out. And those awful people doing those awful things. Even though that's justified, makes sense, it's putting me out of position with God. I got to get over that. I have to be an overcomer, including my own um, sorrow over my own perceived reality. And in so doing, then, I think I become, uh, if you will, I become Christ in that sense, uh, which means that I'm in relation with the Lord, which means I can go with him wherever he'll take me because I trust and all good things come from the Lord. Psalm 16, I know that. And anything good I have comes from the Lord. I know that. Same. So even if, you know, the Nazis show up and they machine gun down the whole neighborhood, okay, I'm, I've got my oil in the lamp. I see I'm gunned down. It's over in a second. Um, I pray for my, the, the shooters to make sure that I'm free so I can go on. And in this day and age, I think so many of us are looking at Bible prophecy, gloom and doom, but it it always comes with it, the blame of this group or that group or these people or those people. And baked into that cake, cake is the undoing of our faith. I know. It's the most challenging test God could possibly give us. You know, will we maintain when the whole world goes crazy or will we point the finger of blame? Once we point the finger of blame, it's over for us. Anyway, uh, with that, I'm going to get out of here. I bid you shalom. Goodbye.